Hi everybody, this is the Baseball Hide, the amazing, spectacular, terrific, the great one, the people's champion, your host of Hide, and welcome back to the Baseball Hut 2. I hope you like this video. Did you know that Shohei Otani finally signed? I couldn't believe it. It's all about the winning. We we're talking about the reaction going around. It's all about winning, folks. Don't ever forget that. Shohei Otani is all about the winning. Can I tell you how much he got? He got $700 million. Wow. Who's the closest guy to get that much money? What, Mike Trout? 434 something But it's all about the money with Shohei Otani. It's all that matters to him. And he went to a team that gave him as much money as you could possibly give him. But he's about the winning. Let me tell you something, folks. And I learned this uh, being a fan of sports for a long time. Uh, the former Giants uh, general manager in the football uh, New York Giants. Uh, George Young always said, when players say it's not about the money, it's always about the money. This guy went to the Dodgers because they gave him $700 million. Don't ever forget that. And they can wrap it any way they want to wrap it. He went for, to the highest bidder. He told the teams, his agent told the teams, you're signing two players. And they paid, they paid through the nose. And they deferred. I would mention they are now getting around the defer, the, the, to the, the uh, competitive balancing tax, which the Mets got hit this year and got, obviously got hit because of the, the draft. Uh, obviously because of the Mets' record and the fact that they're drafting, uh, they got hit with the competitive tax. But the Dodgers defer the money? How do you defer $700 million and get away with that shit? Um uh, it also tells you a lot of things about the owners, too. That they have so much money that they're willing to spend this much. And you wonder how much money, uh, if you had uh, owners that were willing to spend like this, like the, like the A's and the Orioles, how much better, how much more success those franchises would have if you had owners that wanted to spend like this. So just keep that in mind. Now, a lot of talk I've been hearing is that over the next 10 years, they're going to they're gonna sell the Guggenheim Group, I guess, owns uh, the Dodgers. They're going to sell the Dodgers in the, in within 10 years. They'll get such a big investment back. And this has something to do with, I guess, selling the team or whatever. It doesn't matter. But like I said, this this is finally over. It's finally done with. We can move on to talking about the other players. I was getting so sick of this this monkey garbage over the last, few, uh, last week or two because this guy was holding up the market. And hopefully now... Uh, we can learn about, uh, see who is going to sign where. This this was a big pain in the ass, quite frankly. But we're going to read just, that's my reaction. <laughs> this is my reaction, which is very different than most. Uh, it's from awfulannouncing.com. I would mention also the media, after signing this deal, was, was saying how this is great for baseball. How is it great for the Baltimore Orioles fans? How is this great for the Oakland A's fans? How is this great for the Toronto Blue Jays fans, who basically got jerked around on Friday, thinking that Otani was on his way to, to, to Canada? How is this great for baseball? I don't know about that. It's not great for those teams that don't want to spend the money. It's not great for those fan bases. It's never good for the fans. If it's not good for the fans, it's not good for the game. Sports media reacted to the showy Otani mega deal like the rest of us. It's from Awful Announcing. Like everyone else, the sports media world reacted in awe to the earth-shattering contract that Shohei Otani signed with the Dodgers. Shohei Otani ended the self-imposed moratorium on his free agency on Saturday. The announcement that the two-time American League MVP would sign with the Dodgers sent everyone into a tizzy. Then came the earth-shattering contract figure. Ten years, $700 million, according to ESPN's Jeff Pazant. Who now tonight is saying that this is great for baseball. This is not great for the Blue Jays fans. This is not great for the for the A's fans or the Guardians who don't spend money. Or the A's. How, how do you think the Giants feel? They gotta deal with us now. How do they feel? The record setting deal is the most guaranteed money given to a player in Major League Baseball history. Experts almost unanimously agreed that Otani was set to become the first half-billion-dollar player. The fact that the figure actually exceeded this, that is crazy, and especially while to read in print. It's one thing to suggest it and toss it around back and forth. It's entirely another thing to see it legibly written out. 
Baseball fans and enthusiasts weren't alone in having jaw-dropping reactions. Sports media members and otherwise flocked and buzzed over the mega deal. This is from J.J. White. He says, my goodness, boy, it's... He really put out a, a, a lot of stuff going on. Uh, Mina Kimes. Be right back trying to teach my 10-year-old how to hit and pitch. Uh, Field Yates. Raise your kids to be the best baseball player on the planet. Um, Adam Shine. Shine. Dodgers. Hell yeah. Heard about it. Just perfect. Great for Otani in baseball. No, it is not. It's great for him. <clears throat> and baseball and the Dodgers. Not great for, for the fans of other teams. And Dodge also seriously worth every single penny. Bag it, Babe Ruth. Now, I would mention this about Babe Ruth. Babe Ruth was not a 270 hitter. Shohei Otani is a 274 hitter. Babe Ruth's one of the great hitters in the, in the history of baseball. Aside from being a great home run hitter. The preeminent home run hitter of all time. So Adam Schein, who was a New Yorker, should, should watch himself. So supposedly a Yankee fan. I remember when Marina wouldn't let him let team trade Otani because he didn't want to be known as owner who lost him. Again, Adam Shine, a former member, a former screwball at WFAN. I would mention about Adam Shine again that he was at WFAN for a long time. There is only one Babe Ruth. Babe Ruth did it over 20 years, what he did. Okay? From 1914 to 1936. 22 years. He was the greatest player of all time. Joey Otani's done it over three years. Relax yourself. Others were ready to, ready with jokes like Kevin Clark. I don't know who he is. Seven. Uh, it doesn't matter. You want to hear my jokes, folks. From Richard Deesh. Douchebag, I don't know. Forever the plane ride from hell for Canada. Shannon Sharp. It was not too sharp, to be honest with you. Damn it, played the wrong sport. Ten years, seven hundred million. Congrats, Otani. Got to see him play once. From Skip Bayless. Oh boy, that's there's not a lot of uh, Skip uh, Skip Screwball. Uh, move over, LeBron. You're now the second biggest sports star in Hollywood. Skip Bayless. Oh, uh, like I said, um, there's only one Babe Ruth. He did it over 20 years. And I know he didn't. Now, Babe Ruth always said that you couldn't do both at the same time. I was looking into this. Uh, I was looking, what the hell was I doing? I watched the movie Eight Men Out. The MLB Network's been playing that a lot. And I was curious about Kid Gleason. Because in the movie, uh, what the hell is his name? Dickie Carp says in the movie to him, he's like, look, I, I watched you as a kid. You threw a no-hitter against Cy Young. So I wanted to see him. I wanted to read it on Baseball Reference on Kid Gleason. And I didn't realize that, uh, and I didn't know this. It didn't even it occur to me. Kid Gleason did something that Babe Ruth did. He was a position player, and he was a pitcher. Not at the same time. Uh, which I thought was amazing. Anytime a pitcher is able to do, a player is able to do that, that is quite the feat. Now, there is word that Babe Ruth had said that it was very difficult to do both. Um, nobody's asking simple questions about Otani. Now, I'm not a Mets fan or pissed that they didn't sign him. I'm glad they didn't sign him to this money. This is crazy. Okay? But I'm going to ask a very simple question. How is he able to recover from hitting to pitching every single day? <clears throat> Isn't that what we were dealing with in the 90s? It wasn't so much about the power. It wasn't so much about uh, you know the crazy uh, video game numbers that we were seeing in the 90s. But the one thing the players said that were doing that stuff back then <clears throat> was their recovery time. It was their, their ability to recover from uh, injuries. Their ability to recover from just day-to-day -day nicks and, and stuff like that. that. That's what they said was the biggest takeaway. Now, I'm not suggesting that. You can make up your mind on that. But it is interesting is he's the only player that I can think of. He's able to do something that nobody else has been able to do. In the history of this sport, 150-something years. And I would mention, he has broken down. He's had two injuries in six years to that elbow. So it's not this sort of elixir and pitching. He's not pitching next year. 
And again, even though he's put up very, very good offensive numbers, he's a 274 hitter. So he paid seven hundred or well, three hundred and fifty million dollars for seven a two seventy four hitter. Babe Ruth hit three thirty. And had the largest OPS, the highest OPS in the history of the game as an offensive player. And the highest war in the history of baseball, too. So just keep that in mind. As well, of course, he was a pitcher, too. But you let me know what you think about this video. It's a very different video. You're not going to see this kind of video anywhere else. All the media, they're falling over themselves on this deal. They're ignoring this, the stuff that's going on with him. I'm telling you, something, something isn't right. Something isn't right in the state of Denmark. I don't care what anybody says. So let me know what you think about this video. Of course, please subscribe to Baseball Hut, too. And I'll see you later.